Hello and welcome back to Studio 5 uh, going live in the afternoon. Um, this is a follow on from this morning where we were looking at making applied leather M bands. And what I'd like to do is just very quickly show you uh, what I've done with mine. The, um, and I'm sorry it was a little while, I had to make this book to continue the demonstration. I realised we didn't have a book ready, but there we go. So the M bands have been um, adhered on. Um, and the edges have been chamfered over the shoulder so there isn't a huge bump there and we can see if I can just get the pressing board out of the way we can see that the M band has been trimmed in such a way that it's actually shorter than the shoulder can you see it stopped short of the shoulder and basically the M band should finish in the middle of the first and last section so it doesn't get over long so it doesn't sort of kink or cockle up when the book has been finished and finely pressed. Anyway, so that's that. Um, I've sewn the text block onto three flat cords. That's basically a bookbinder's cord which has been uh, gently unravelled and then sewn over very similar to as you would a tape. This is one of the techniques I use. There are many, many different sorts of uh, techniques. Text block has been section sewn. Um, what else about it? Tipped on ordinary common end papers. That's about it really. First lining of fray knot with the second lining of craft paper, nice and simple. The um, next operation basically is to attach the boards. So a little bit about the boards that I'm going to be using. I'll just put the book to one side. But where are my boards? I had them earlier. Oh, don't tell me. What have I done? Oh, they're in the press. They're in the press drying. That's where they are. Now, <clears throat> for the sake of this demonstration, what I'm going to be doing is I've used a ordinary two millimetre uh, grey bookbinders board. I know there will be some people saying, well, if you're doing this sort of work, you should be using a mill board or a Gemini board or something like that. That's great if you can cut those with a board chop. If you don't have a board chop, if you're just starting out, then I would suggest using grey board. It's slightly softer, it's easier to cut with a knife. Now what I have done with the board is on the inside, I've lined it, you can see the difference in colour, I've lined the boards with a cartridge paper, an acid-free neutral, for, uh, uh, it's you know, a neutral um, craft paper of 130 GSM. Uh, and I've applied the adhesive to the craft, uh, sorry, to the uh, paper, not the board, to the paper, uh, so that the board just gently curls in when it's dry and it will flatten itself out relatively soon. Now as for the measurements for it, if I pop that into position, the board should overhang the um, text block both at the head, the tail and the fore edge. A little bit more about this over large fore edge later on, I'll come to that soon. But basically you want the board to just go over the top edge of your M band by about half a millimeter. So it's half a millimeter longer here than the total distance from the M band to the M band top, and the same here. So it's this just fractionally bigger. Um, now, what I do with my cords is I fray them out, and if anybody's familiar with my hair, my hair, that is very recognizable. And basically, I use a sharp pointy thing, unravel the cord, and then just Gently tease it out. Now when you're making your um, book and you're gluing up your spine and you're rounding and backing and everything, try not to get adhesive on the tape because of the, or the cord I should say, because otherwise this is what happens. It becomes a little bit stiff to manipulate. But with a little bit of patience you can do it. No problem. Just tease it out. Try not to take any of the cord away, any of the fibres away, and then just tease that out there so it looks like, I don't know, it looks like hair, I suppose, for want of a better word. I'm just going to put the board into position there. Notice I'm keeping the cords on the outside of the board. This is going to be quite important later on. Turn over, and what I then do is I trim my uh, frayed cords to approximately two and a half, three centimetres, something like that. So we're now ready to start applying the boards, and it is dead, 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 dead. I will repeat that again. Dead simple. The traditional way, as we saw this morning, is to make holes in the boards and then lace your cords through. And there's lots of beating with hammers. And there's 
cutting of grooves and all sorts of things. This is a simpler way. There are lots and lots of different ways, of course, of attaching uh, boards. This is just one of them. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be ensuring that the square, and the square is the amount that the board overhangs the text block, is equal both at the head and the tail. The fore edge will look after itself, don't worry about that. I purposefully cut it longer than it needs to be, or wider than it needs to be, so that when I've got my boards on into position and everything's glued out, then I can trim them down. That way I'm guaranteed of getting a nice square on the fore edge. So a little bit of fiddling around. Make sure the square's nice and even, as even as you can get it, be nice and equal. A little bit of time spent now will make all the difference later on. So it's a little bit, you know, gently tweak, 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 make sure everything's okay. And I'm looking to make sure the head and tail square is equal. So it's going to be the same here and the same here. Once I'm happy with that, what I can do is I can get a square piece of wood. And I'm going to just lay it up to the tail of the book. I always put it to the tail, and it's this side so that I know that the book will be will will stand up on the shelf nice and square so that is now butted to the bottom edge of the board now I'm going to start applying my adhesive and I'm going to be putting my adhesive just along the edge of the board here I'm going to be using a PVA paste mix to do that with so out comes the tray and I use a roller and I keep my PVA in a little water bottle so I'm reusing something and it means that I don't have to keep going backwards and forwards to the adhesive cupboard, lump, humping around a huge, you know, 15 kilogram thing of PVA or whatever. And I'm going to mix that up quite nicely. And again, you'll notice that I use a roller, not a brush for this particular job. Rollers are great. You get nice, even coverage. You don't get any hairs coming out. And um, yeah, I, I prefer to use it and it's a, it's a lot, 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 lot quicker. I know some people do go on about the waste. I'm worried about, more worried about wasted time, but there you go. Um, the arm here I had specially made and that's uh, solid silver. Um, so it doesn't, it doesn't rust or anything. And I've had it for a long, long time and it's, it's wonderfully perfect. It's lovely, in fact. So I will be using a little bit of a brush later on, but getting that ready. To rock and roll so let's get the boards attached nice and easy so first of all and please notice how little waste paper i use during this operation so first of all i'm going to be putting my adhesive along this edge which is going to be going underneath the cords nice and fluid just on the board edge there like that nothing special slide it into position Keeping an eye, make sure nothing moves, make sure everything looks beautiful. And then put a weight on top just to make sure nothing's going to move. And then using your bone folder or Teflon folder or bamboo folder, whatever you've got, just push those down onto the board. Really make sure that the adhesive seeps through all those fibres. And this is a great technique for um, doing restoration projects where perhaps... The text block doesn't need re-sewing, you just need to reintroduce new cords or something and then attach the boards or something like that. This is a really great little trick to do that with and in actual fact um, this is where that technique actually comes from. There is an amusing anecdote about that um, which I will relay quite soon. So basically make sure everything's cool and everything's down. You may want to just fray that out a little bit more and then using the brush I just want to get a little bit more adhesive on the top. Remember, board and paper and cord is hygroscopic. It will suck in the adhesive. So let's really make sure that's nicely impregnated in preparation for the next part. OK, great. Now, here comes the old sandcastle bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this round, making sure that the... Um, book overhangs my pressing board so that I don't get any adhesive going onto the pressing board and once again what I'm going to do is I'm going to work to the tail 
put my little wooden block in place and you can see that just happening just there take this board up I mean how quick is this no nails no hammering no annoying the neighbors nice and quick just slide it into position Make sure everything's as square as you can get it. Check that everything's in the right place, it, and it is. It's beautiful. The site, everything's happy. Small children are giggling. People are buying ice creams. It's a beautiful day in London at the moment. The aeroplanes have started again. Don't know why nobody's going anywhere. And there we go. So nicely sprayed, splayed out. And this is the point where you could, if you wanted to, just check that the book stands up. I'm pretty sure of this. But, you know, let these dry if you wanted to. Stand the book up. And if it's in the wrong place, all you have to do is just peel these back, reposition, and just go for it. So, that's the boards halfway attached. Now, for those of us who are familiar with um, aeroplanes of the 1940s, there is a a very famous aeroplane called the Mosquito, which is basically an all wooden um, aeroplane that gained its strength from laminations. And we're going to get strength in the boards from the laminations we're now going to be using because we're now going to be using watercolour paper. And this is about 200 GSM watercolour paper, which will be going on top of the whole board area, right to the edge of the board, not to the spine edge, to the board edge. And then that will be pressed forming a lamination and then all we have to do is just gently sand out any lumps and bumps from this area here so nice and easy with this once again i'm going to be applying the adhesive this time not to the paper but to the board because the board is closest to the text block and i'm going all over it please notice that i'm being very careful not using any waste paper for me there is no such thing as waste paper every piece of paper has got a use why use paper to make a book? That's what I, anyway, moving on. Um, so, nice, goodly amount on there. Now, I don't want to get use the, my roller or brush along this edge here because I get may, may get adhesive going onto the spine edge here and I don't really want that. So what I'm going to do is I put the adhesive onto the board, onto the, onto the paper here. And I think you can just see that. I may just move this camera back slightly. So I'm working on the edge of the board my workbench I should say and I'm just applying you know three or four centimeters of adhesive just to this edge here again there's no need to use waste paper and then very carefully I'm just going to position this to the edge of the board sliding it into position Consolidate with either your Teflon folder, bone folder, wooden ruler, whatever you're using. Whatever you can get your hands on. And then very carefully, just going to work on the bench for a second because I just want to get a nice firm attachment to this. Pay particular attention to the edges. Work nice and quickly. And in this weather, you've got to work very, very, very quickly. So really get the adhesive down. You see how quick it is with the roller, how even it is as well. There's no sort of messing around. Lovely jubbly, job done there. Slide that to one place. Second lot of watercolor paper. Now, if you haven't got watercolor paper, okay, that's, you know, it's something that we can address by perhaps saving waste paper, laminating it up and using that. Why not? Now, um, thing about all the boards and the paper that I'm using, the grain direction is long grain in line with the spine of the book. For those of you who are not sure what I mean by grain direction of paper, may I make a suggestion? You just go online into your search engine grain direction of paper and there will be a plethora a multitude of pages explaining it very earnest people explaining everything so we can now see that the 
boards are now attached really making sure that's down nice and neatly really making sure that everything's beautiful 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 now I'm going to be putting this into the press <clears throat> now to ensure that I don't crush anything I'm going to be using metal tins and these are what half a mil um, they're all printing plates and they're basically so I don't get any pressure line so I can just open that up insert that close the board back down second tin into position and then crack it really is hot in here and then using my pressing board I'm going to put the, the text block onto the pressing board the book onto the pressing board well, what I am going to ensure is that the spine stays out of the pressing boards so it's just overhanging and that's to ensure that I do not crush the shoulder edge another pressing board on top isn't that simple and quick? So it's now looking something like that. So you can see that the spine is on the outside. And that's going to go into one of the presses until dry. So that will probably be... And really give it the onions. So that will probably be... Um, the first thing we'll be looking at tomorrow morning. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. It was uh, that's a quick board attachment, uh, no lumps, no bumps, and that sort of thing. Um, tomorrow we're going to be looking predominantly at book cloth, uh, the various sorts of different book cloths, how to very simply decorate book cloth, what you can do with it, and then also, if time permits, how to make your very own book cloth. And we'll be using um, silk to do that with, I think, and why not? Anyway, thank you very, very much indeed. Uh, this was Studio 5 and we were going live and that is board attachment. Thank you all very, very much indeed. Have a lovely afternoon. I am now going to sit down and have a nice, cool, refreshing drink of water. Thank you and bye bye.